Wonderful, thank you Kelly. Next up we have Braxton presenting on, about bird species. Hi, my name is Braxton. I'm going to be talking to you guys about some new bioacoustic methods and fledging success. study species is the Aki of Palau. This is an endangered endemic from this island, and the young of this species produce these distinct and persistent begging calls, which is why they were chosen. The study site was Hakalau Forest National Wildlife Refuge. Um, this is a place the Aki Palau are known to breed, and the UHU Alohe Lab has years worth of passive recordings from the site. So the question that I wanted to answer was, can Google's perch bird pacifier in combination with a novel bioacoustic method be used to estimate fledging success in an endangered Hawaiian bird? And this is an important question because if this is the case, then that's another tool in conservationist hands that we can use to monitor how these birds are doing and to help inform management decisions. So the hypothesis that I had was that there's a relationship between juvenile and adult call densities, as well as that juvenile densities would vary seasonally. We predicted that juvenile call densities would be highest during the summer months, and that there would be a relationship between juvenile and adult call densities um, that tracked with current populations of Occupalau. So the first step is to generate some training samples. This was done using Google's perch search, which is a unique tool in that it requires very few samples to start, so you can imagine just how important this is for endangered and understudied species especially. The way that it works is that it compares the acoustic features of a sample to a larger data set in order to generate more training samples. So we compiled training samples from two sites, Hakalau and Pukumaka'ala. So based on some preliminary work done at UH Hilo, call densities can be used as a proxy for abundance. And then in this case, juvenile call densities are used as a proxy for fledging success because it's only these successfully fledged young that are producing these begging calls. So the call density estimate, or Q, is the detection, or the, the proportion of detection windows within an audio that contain um, vocalizations. And a short and sweet way of explaining how this number gets produced is that a fixed number of human validated samples gets incorporated into a Bayesian predictive reasoning model. So we looked at data from the 2023 year at three different sites along an elevational gradient at Hakalau. Um, and we picked these sites because we have known distributions of Occupalau here based on point counts. Another feature of this model is that it's able to computationally estimate call densities for each month. And then additional validations can be ran to generate more accurate estimates at this month level. So what we found was for the site, Wide call densities, the highest densities of juveniles was found at the highest elevation site, Huakala, followed by the mid-elevation site and then the lowest elevation site, and then these same trends um, were found in the adults. And then here you can see those computational call density estimates for the highest elevation site, Huakala. You can see that peak during the summer months for juveniles and adults. And then here you can see that the Validation-based estimates differ a little bit from those computational estimates. You can see that the peak for juveniles here is actually in January. <coughs> so some key takeaways is that there was a correlation between the site-level juvenile and adult call densities that tracked with known distributions of Occupalau. And this is a really optimistic sign for this method's uh, further use. Um, in addition, the juvenile call densities varied seasonally though not as predicted with the highest densities being found during the summer months. Um, this isn't entirely unusual as Occupal are known to breed year-round and they're found in relatively low densities even at Hawklaw. So it's possible that at a given recorder site that most of the begging calls picked up during the year could come from one or just a few juveniles. Some more things to note was that the computational call densities estimate, estimates differed from the validation-based estimates uh, this is an area of current research being done at UH Hilo. One possible way that we could improve these computational 
Um, Paul then said the estimates would be to incorporate a stratified sampling design into the validation protocol, which would create a random sampling throughout the year rather than a true random sample. Um, the adult and juvenile call density is also varied by season independently, which could perhaps be because adults aren't vocalizing at the call's highest densities while they're growing young, but we really would need to analyze additional recorder sites to make any conclusions about this, or any conclusions about juvenile and adult seasonality in general, or distributions along an elevational gradient. So more work needs to be done. But overall, the perch bird classifier, in combination with this novel analytical model, show great promise for further use in estimating the abundance of birds as well as reproductive success, which is gonna be super crucial moving forward to help monitor and protect our native birds. So thank you to Amanda Levine and Tani Moda Johnson, Pat Hart, and Lenny Ivanova. Here's more excited and thank you guys for listening. I also looked at the adult songs. Um, I think it did pretty good at picking up the adult songs, but I feel like the calls could maybe be a little better because there's like more variation, I think. Um, yeah, it's just like different call types. Was, I think maybe not picking up all of them. Uh, do you think the difference in detections at the upper site were a function of there being more up there, or do you think it was a matter of detection that the lower site there was other noise and things going on? Um, since it was tracking with those distributions that we have based on point counts, I would feel pretty good about saying that we found higher densities because there's more birds. Um, yes, we are doing things with other species. Um, I think Warren's giving a talk later today, or she's going to be talking about what she's doing um, with these tools, and then um, some other members of our lab are doing it for different species, but I don't know that we have any results yet, other than what's come from Amanda, who's been spearheading these new methods. You're the first for Fletchies. Yeah, Jalissa? Um, what was be your ideal structure that you would want to have people to understand What would be my ideal structure for yeah, people to understand? Like how would you want, how would you want like, the audience or the public to understand the presentation of the basics of the economy or species? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I think I would mostly just want people to like first know that they exist um, and understand how important they are both ecologically and culturally. Um, and after they know that, then we can talk about some of the um, ways that they're threatened and how we can work towards saving them. Anybody else? Yeah, Lauren. I have a quick question. Um, is this just from one year's worth of data? Yeah, this is, this is just from 2023. I think it'd be interesting to look at like previous years and see how they change over time. Well, thank you.